Hi guys, this is Jason Zak from Nathaniel School of Music. In this lesson, we are going to look at what you could call as a combo piano exercise for developing two different skills at the same time. Sort of like, you know, a gym workout where you do upper body and the lower body together or some such thing or some crazy stuff which these gym people do. So, what you could do is think of one challenge, not just for this lesson. We are going to bring out more lessons on different activities in each hand. This is hopefully the start of many more. So what you should ask yourself, even if you want to try something on your own, is what can I do in the right hand which is challenging me? Maybe it's scales, maybe it's some exercise, some pattern. While doing that, can the left hand do something different? So the right hand is focusing on something melodic. Maybe the left hand can do something rhythmic or harmonic in nature. So I hope to guide you in the right direction in terms of practicing this. And you may want to get a book or a pen and paper out because you we are going to choose a scale which is not in our comfort zone, C major. As always, when this channel started till now in 2024, we've maintained one consistent thing. Our videos have gotten better and better. A few other things with respect to audio has gotten better and better. Maybe uh, the way I teach has hopefully gotten better and better. But one thing has not changed. C major is illegal. So in your books, we are going to write down... Usually we do this stuff with major scale so i thought in today's lesson to make it more interesting we'll take a minor scale and we'll do the c root but c minor so you will find that c minor is very different than c major a good way to remember the minor scale in comparison with the major would be minor will have a flat three see this is your normal three e minor will have a flat three that's your major sixth flatten that you get a minor sixth and then major 7 becomes a minor 7. So this is what you could call as the natural minor scale. Or you could also say that C is a relative minor with respect to what major? Well, you'll the answer to that question is E flat major. Because E flat major's 6th major 6 interval will form C minor. So C minor will have the same notes as E flat major. So before we get started with our planning, writing everything down, what the right hand and left hand should do, it'll be awesome if you could consider hitting that subscribe button and turn on the bell icon for regular notifications. Also, the notation from this lesson will be given to you as a PDF on our Patreon page, along with my handwritten notes, which will definitely help supplement this learning. Okay, let's get cracking. So let's first look at writing C minor scale. I've already told you the notes. What you'd want to do as a student of the piano is to write it in two ways. The first way is to write the scale in a neat round circle. Don't write the scale in a line. Lines are not helpful when you want to do chords, when you want to form intervals, when you want to form connections between notes. Writing these scales... Like how, you know, you if you Google what are the notes of C minor, it's going to tell you in a line or a row of notes. I think that's highly uninspiring and sometimes counterproductive. So don't write scales in lines. Write them in a circle. And as piano students, I would encourage you to also draw the shapes, what I call as piano worms. So that will be the white keys going up to the black keys whenever needed, coming back to white and then the black. So you get this very unique C minor shape, you know. C, D, E flat, F, white note, G, white note, A flat, black, B flat, C. Okay. So any decision can be made. You know, I want to go up a sixth. So visualize the notes. You know it's A flat, B flat because you have the shape in your head. So write it in a circle, very important. It's not only for this lesson. Pretty much in general, if you're watching my videos, you'll realize that we tend to write scales a lot in the circular, circular form. So let me first introduce you to the left hand and then the right hand. I'm assuming that your skill level might be beginner or you might even be a more advanced or an intermediate player. So I hope this lesson will have something for everyone. In the left hand, what I want you to do, if you're a beginner or otherwise, if you'd like to go in a flow, follow along with me, get your keyboards out. That'll be helpful for this lesson. 
you would play each of the notes of the c natural minor scale one by one like this using octaves would be helpful but if you cannot stretch if your hands are too small then what you could do is just play single finger notes and if you're doing single finger notes get used to the piano fingering so you do in the left hand 1 2 3 4 5 5 fingers cross your middle finger a flat b flat c let's do that again we have to practice ascending and descending c d e flat f g a flat would be with your thumb uh, with your middle finger c d e flat f g middle then the whole hand crosses over so that's your ascending descending the same way as you went up you come down c b flat a flat cross thumb g f e flat d c again so if you're doing single finger movement this is what i want you to practice in the left hand if you're doing octaves then you just go pinky and thumb with the octaves descending now why i requested you to bring out a book with a pencil or pen would be to map out the chords so the fact that we've written c minor in a neat round circle means that you can get the triads easily or if not the triads at least the thirds or at least the fifths you can get so many things in that circular form so c minor if you want to do triads or just thirds look at the circle c skip one play one c skipping to the d skipping the d rather and playing the e flat so you have your thirds so you can climb your natural minor in thirds don't worry too much about fingering just make sure you can kind of survive it thirds write that down as well you can see my notes to check your answer along with thirds it's also also nice to populate your fifth interval so again the circle will help you and most of the fifths in the natural minor as well as the major scale are perfect fifth all but one so in the major scale the seventh degree will form a diminished fifth interval that one you'll get a diminished fifth. in the natural minor scale the the second degree so c will be perfect fifth d will form a diminished fifth or a tritone interval so just remember that in the natural minor the second will form a tritone perfect fifth tritone perfect fifth perfect fifth perfect fifth still perfect fifth perfect fifth lot of perfect fifths except for that second one so now if you start building triads so we've looked at the scale we've looked at thirds we've looked at fifths a triad is nothing but a third as well as the fifth there we go and you've just got yourself a c minor triad so c minor the second one would be d with its third and its fifth <clears throat> a warning to you that the fifth is not a perfect fifth because that will take it outside the c natural minor domain it will make it more a dorian kind of sound so the second chord of the c natural minor would be d diminished so this is how you could play it pinky middle index if you like kind of works yeah i think that's the most efficient here then we are moving forward to the third major e flat major e flat g b flat then you go to your four minor which is f minor five minor which is g minor six flat major which is a flat major seven flat major which is b flat major the naming convention is based on the intervals with respect to the root so when i say flat 3 i mean that it's a minor third with respect to c so you'll get one minor one minor small roman we use for minor two 
diminished or dim or you can even write small 2 with a degree that will give you a diminished sound a chord you may think this is the third major but it's good to write it as 3 flat major or just capital 3 flat with Romans small 4 minor small 5 minor capital 6 flat major because that's 6 flat with respect to C capital 7 flat with respect to C major so C minor, D diminished, E flat major, F minor, G minor, A flat major, B flat major, C minor you can descend E minor, B flat major, A flat major, G minor, F minor, E flat major, D, D diminished, C minor so that's your movement so we went from to thirds To fifths all of these are good practices and now triads which is a third and a fifth descending you can do this in the right hand later for now I am demonstrating in the left hand because I have other activities for you in the right hand now, if you're a, a bit more of an advanced player, if you're bored with triads by now, you can probably look at seventh chord. So how do we build the seventh chords of the natural minor scale? Minor seventh will be at the degree one. Minor seventh flat five or the half diminished chord used with the phi sign will be a minor seventh flat five at the degree two. Major 7th at the degree 3 flat or the 3rd note. Minor 7th at the degree 4, F minor 7th. Minor 5 at the degree 5, uh, the G minor 7th. Then at the degree 6 flat, you'll have a major 7th chord. A flat major 7th. Then at the 7th flat degree, you'll have your lone dominant 7th chord. B flat major with a dominant 7th on top. We just say B flat 7th for short. So your 7th chord formations, we also call them as chord extensions. To the You're extending it with a 7th interval. Minor 7th, minor 7 flat 5, half diminished. Major 7th, minor 7th, minor 7th. Major 7th at the flat 6. Dominant 7th at the flat 7 back to tonic you can even do a descend which will be a, another challenge on its own ascending versus descending different challenge so again to overcome these sort of shapes it's important that again you develop some muscle memory around the combo between white and black notes so if you take c minor seventh you can visualize it like this can you not white black white black you can also then simplify it for your brain by saying this is very similar in shape so if i close my eyes and move to the f see i can play the exact same chord so c minor seventh and f minor seventh share the same shape not the same notes but the same chord shape it's almost like playing the guitar if you think about it you have similar shapes for your chords which you need to muscle down d minor 7 flat 5 i wouldn't say that this is very similar to anything else so you have to remember that on your own the major sevens can be stacked up e flat major seventh a flat major seventh dominant try to remember that minus 7 flat 5 very unique shapes the dominant is like a boat b flat d f a flat if you map that down it's pretty much a boat isn't it and then yeah major sevens i've told you minor seven c and f are similar g is the unique fellow so the unique chords to remember are d minus seven flat five G minor 7th and lastly the dominant B flat which is a simple boat shape. So that's pretty much the left hand. You may be thinking I can do more, I can create a pattern, some arpeggio or something. 
let's not bother because I think this itself will be a good workout. The right hand is going to start doing a melodic pattern and the melodic pattern will be pretty much from the natural minor scale. Let me play you the pattern and then you'll only kind of get a feel of it. There we go. As you can see, some way to ascend the scale and some way to descend the scale. Okay, so what happened here? If you look at it intervillically, from every... I'm changing my starting point in the pattern. So the pattern is... 1, 2, 3, 1. I've made it slightly tricky because normally people will do 1, 2, 3, 2, 3, 4 like this. But when you come back to the root, I find this tricky even on other instruments which I play. You go... Come back to the one where you started. So, sa, re, ga, sa, one, two, three, flat, one, because the three is flat. So, and now what happens? You do start with the two. Now, the simple rule of piano fingering is don't repeat fingers when they are adjacent to each other. When the notes are adjacent, don't repeat fingers. So, you don't want to do... You could but only at slow speeds. If you want to do it fast, you can't, you can't repeat fingers, see? If you want to get it at that speed, you have to use all your five fingers or at least the first four. So what you want to try and do is don't cross your thumb, rather index. Now you can bring your thumb back. Start this off with the index finger or you might think, oh, I can just use my middle. But now, now you'll have to do a, a big stretch here. So you get the idea. You have to figure out a fingering which takes you to the top and don't repeat any fingers because at fast semi-quaver and beyond speeds, it'll be unplayable if you repeat fingers. So let's try and figure out an option going up. D. E flat, cross the thumb to F. Let's do that together. D, E flat, F, D, E flat, F, D. Now you could do middle. E flat, cross. Or you could use your index finger. I think this is working for me. So you need to experiment because each scale is different when it comes to this linear kind of flow of notes. That works for me. And a good way to test it is play it as fast as you can. If at the fast speed it still works, it is the correct fingering. What's the absolute wrong fingering? Trying to play with one finger. You, you might as well get a stick or play with your nose or something like that. There's no point. You have to use all the five fingers while playing. Or at least the first three and then the ring at times. Pinky, you save here and there. Wherever you have no other option, you can use the pinky for linear movement. So again, test it out at speed. Kind of works. And at that E flat point, you could cross your thumb over. And now it just moves smooth sailing forward. F, G, A flat. Need to bring your thumb there. In order to, in order to do that B flat movement. So. Now I understand some of you might have your own fingering and fingering is subjective. All I'm trying to say is don't repeat fingers and figure out the right crossover point. And, you know, lastly, if it's a fast speed, then you're really testing the fingering out. So play it at speed and see how you can sustain the, the timing also. You should be able to keep the pulse with whatever you're doing. Okay, and another kind of a cheat code which some of you, some of us use for melodies is 
we have this button on our keyboards, some of the keyboards. I don't have one, but it's there on some keyboards. Is this auto sustain feature where it kind of makes the fingering irrelevant. You know, so you just hold down that button. In my case, I'm holding down the pedal, but so now you're not testing your fingering at all. You can might you can use it sounds smooth even with one finger. So try to avoid maybe the, avoid the pedal in the initial stages and more certainly avoid that button the the sustaining button on your keyboard because otherwise you're you're not practicing you're not going to get the right fingering at all. So let's do it together. Let's count one and two and three and start. One and two and three and Ascending again. Descending is very easy. You start with your middle because I'm already on the C. This is where I would engage my pinky. It's not too difficult. See? Always testing with speed. Ring will sit very neatly on C. There. Then, bring back your ring. Pinky. Ring sits well, middle. One more time descending. I don't know about you, but I always get this feeling that descending anything on the piano is a lot easier than ascending. Let me know what you think in the com comments. Or if you have any alternate fingering you'd like to share, you could write it down and I'll be happy to go through it. And it'll also be a good learning experience for everyone to kind of benefit with a fingering style they would like. I find that a, some, some of my students like a lot of symmetry in their playing when it comes to fingering. So a student may go... You want to kind of just jump it, but then you won't get speed, you know. So maybe you can consider. Something a bit less symmetric. In order to get your goal done. There we go. Some students don't like to bring the thumb on the black note. Even I used to be one of those back in the day. But uh, I think it's helpful to bring your thumb. You should also think what is more ergonomic for you. So let's now do the exercise with single root, single bass roots in the left hand. D. E flat. F. G. A flat. B flat. C. Descending. B flat, A flat, B flat, F, E flat, D. And you could even do octaves. You can do your thirds. an Indian style player you can or any player who likes trills you know you can bring in the trills to your playing if you like you know you can do that's a little triplet there no you can bring that into the party or you can also do fifths in the left hand. Remember, the second one is a diminished fifth or a tritone. Descending. 
descending move on to some triads and i'm playing the triad based on the first uh, uh, note of the pattern so the representing chord will be c minor for that block see for here e flat e flat is the block descending and last but not least if you are an intermediate player you can play this with seventh chords sing it if possible descending if you observe i move the whole exercise up an octave cuz i don't have any room it's very congested so i moved it up there that will be helpful dominant minor descending minor 7th dominant 7th major 7th minor 7th minor 7th major 7th half diminished okay so if you are a bit more intermediate you could do this with 7th chord so that's a kind of a good combo or a parallel workout you're training your 7th chords in one hand and you're playing a scale exercise in the right hand and the seventh chords in the left hand or if you are not so familiar with the seventh chords you can uh, simplify to triads which is also a very important goal to accomplish uh, if you can't do triads you can do fifths you can do thirds or you can just do single scales going up so if you think about your left hand is doing a scale ascending while your right hand is doing a pattern ascending you know and then descending scale descending pattern as well so so i think it's a nice way to to practice piano in general figure out what your right hand needs to do figure out what your left hand needs to do and the end product of all this is hand independence a lot of people want hand independence exercises why not just do two exercises you know and it can get pretty interesting you can follow a drum groove here you can do chords here you can do a melody movement here you can tell yourself if i have 1 hour of piano practice do you want to do half an hour in the right hand half an hour in the left hand or do you want to maximize only the right hand and then you may forget the left hand in this 1 hour you're giving the same amount of importance to both hands improving your hand independence having a lot of fun along the way i feel at least i do when i practice this and instead of that 1 hour workout you're reducing it to half an hour you can do something else in the remaining half an hour because you're doing two 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 hands you're doing two hands in parallel all you need to do is slow it down see what works for your level and go for it we all kind of get annoyed with piano exercises and practicing the piano we we tend to always want to learn songs and improvise and compose and do all those sorts of things but you need to spend time with the exercises and the workout so to speak but i understand it can get boring so in this way of practicing the boring stuff is actually getting compressed and you can also do this in in parallel or combination with anything you're doing at home you could be watching tv you could be chatting with someone in your house you know you could just be chilling out and doing this with a piano in front of you so i tend to do this pretty often and sometimes you start getting bored your conscious brain observes what you're playing and it wants to be a bit more creative and strangely enough the exercise could end up going places it could help you improvise something or it could help you create a composition at some at some point so you should kind of be open to all possibilities and don't have a very fixed process once you've written it down so the writing gets you in the zone it gets you to respect your work but after that once you've done a few iterations you need to then just let it let it go let it go freely and and i hope 
you find something useful with this lesson and if you'd like more scale exercises or more chord exercises and anything to help with your fingering your hand coordination and uh, piano playing in general do consider checking out some of the playlists and other videos which we leave in our description you can also head over to our youtube channel's home page where all of our lessons are categorized very well with playlists and each lesson will have supplementary notes you can find those supplementary notes as well as notation midi files on our patreon page for a lot of the lessons we put out <clears throat> on our youtube channel pretty much all of them actually and if you'd like a more structured approach to learning you can consider two opportunities at nathaniel one is you can do our flagship 6 month course called music method you can do it at a foundation level or an intermediate level If you don't have the time to come into the class and learn a live lesson if you're traveling or if your time schedules don't match you can always head over to nathanielschool.com under our video courses domain and you will find structured lessons from absolute zero what are the notes of music and piano all the way to something a lot more creative where you can learn improvising composing and a lot of departments of music learning so i will look forward to catching you soon at nathaniel school of music cheers and catch you in the next one